بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Love for the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم is part of the religion The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said None of you truly believes until I am more beloved to him than his parents and his children and all people. And part of the true love for the Messenger وسلم, is by following his Sunnah because he is the role model for Muslims. The Messenger وسلم, said, Verily, in the Messenger وسلم, is a role model for anyone who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter. Anyone who wants to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who realize there is a second world, of course, the Messenger وسلم, is the ideal. And love for the Messenger وسلم, and following him is the way to get love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no way to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you are not following the guidance of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who is the final prophet and messenger from God to humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, say O Muhammad to them, if you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then follow me and he will love you and forgive your sins. Now, part of the love for the Messenger وسلم, and following him is to know what he loves. And today we'll speak about the actions or the concepts that he loved. There are so many things on the belief systems, on the personal levels and so on. We'll concentrate on four topics. The things that the Messenger وسلم, loved in worship or in ibadah and in etiquette and morals and dealing with people and in your personal qualities and on public relations or international relations. First we'll speak about the ibadah. Out of all the ibadah, the Messenger وسلم, loved the salah most. And he says, the ple pleasure of my eyes in this world is the salah, the most beloved to me in this world, the most pleasing is the Salah. The reason is because the Salah is a connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A meeting, a conversation between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, this is the most important thing. And the Messenger وسلم, used to concentrate on the obligatory Salah as well as the Nawafil. And there are many. Out of them, there are what is called Rawatib, Sunnah Ratiba that are linked with the obligatory salah. And out of them, two stands out. The two raka'a before Fajr. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about them that they are more beloved to me than whatever the sun shines over. So, um, Our sun shines over so many things, so many planets even around us. But he probably talking about this world, Earth. And it means whatever is in this world. All the empires, the kingdoms, the uh, civilizations, the property, the money, the treasures, everything that you can imagine in this earth, praying to Raka before Fajr is better and more rewarding. So if you are missing that, you are missing a great deal of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one is the four rak'a before dhuhr. And the Messenger وسلم, said about them when he was asked, Abdullah ibn Sa'ib radiallahu anh, he narrates that the Messenger وسلم, used to pray four rak'a before dhuhr. And he used to say that at this time the deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I want that a good deed is presented from me to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like an auditing is coming. So I need to do the best at that time. It's, it's getting upon us before the deadline. So you need to concentrate on four. There are many other benefits, by the way, for four. But we are talking about why he loved them greatly, he himself. Uh, the second thing after that is the uh, fasting. 
the, uh, regarding the four rak'ah, the Messenger وسلم, say the gates of paradise or the gates of heavens are opened at this hour and I wish that a good deed is presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from me at this hour. The second thing is fasting. And the Messenger وسلم, used to fast so much that they will say he will never break the fast. And he used to stop fasting for so long that they will say he will never fast again. That is the non-obligatory fast, okay, nafil fast. However, two days he will always fast. If they are part of his routine fasting, when he continuously fasts, he will fast them. And if he is not fasting any longer continuously, he will still fast them. And those are? Monday and Thursday. By the end of this khutbah, inshallah, we'll try to do a quick quiz, okay, Q&A. Let us see those. Uh, so, part of that is the Monday and Thursday. He was asked about them. When he was asked about Monday, he gave two or three reasons. First reason, it was the day in which I was born, and it was the day in which I was sent as a messenger from God to humanity, and the day in which I received the first revelation from God. When he was about asked about fasting Mondays and Thursdays, he said the deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Mondays and Thursdays. And I wish that when my deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am in the state of fasting. The deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiple times. Daily, we have two times every day, we have two times every week, and we have uh, one or two times every month, and we have one time every year. So here, the Messenger of Allah is speaking about the weekly presentation of our deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The uh, next after that is recitation of the Holy Quran. The recitation of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with concentration and feeling the meanings and responding to what he is reciting. One of the Sahaba mentioned he prayed behind the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a very lengthy prayer with lengthy recitation. He said, and he was not reciting fast. He was reciting slowly and responding to the verses. When he passes by a verse from paradise, he will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy and paradise. When he passes by a verse of punishment or warning, he will seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his punishment. When he will reach a verse of dua, he will make dua and so on. You're reciting the Holy Quran, you need to make the recitation effective. Response to the, uh, a man came to Abdullah bin Mas'ud and he asked him about how to recite one word in the Holy Quran. And he said to him, so you have mastered the full Quran, you are missing only this part? He said, yes, I recite every night or every day so and so. And he mentioned the quarter of the Holy Quran or so. He says, probably you are reciting it fast. Like when you are reciting a poetry or something, a poem or something. When you recite the Holy Quran, then he mentioned the recitation of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The concept is not how much you are reciting from the Holy Quran, but how much did you get from your recitation of the Holy Quran. It doesn't mean that you do not recite the Holy Quran, but part of the recitation is to concentrate on the meanings, the idea, the message. Because the Holy Quran is a message from God, right? So you need to understand the message. That is the whole concept. And part of that comes from the recitation. Furthermore, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved to listen to the recitation of the Holy Quran. Uh, part of what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to love out of the Holy Quran is one surah specifically, Surah Al-Fatih. Al-Fatih means the conquest. Usually, this is a term that is used in war. When there is war and you conquest an area, this is how you conquest something. Here, Al-Fatih, and this is the name of the Surah, Al-Fatih, and it starts with mentioning the conquest twice and as a clear and very clear conquest, and it was not during war. There was no war, no fighting, nothing. It was a treaty of peace. <coughs> Just to understand how peaceful Islam is. The greatest form of conquest, the greatest conquest offered by Allah Almighty to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was what? 
the Treaty of Peace of Al Hudaybi between the Messenger of Allah and Quraysh. Allah Almighty named that surah the conquest and says in the very beginning, Verily, we have offered you, granted you a conquest that is a clear conquest. Why did the Messenger of Allah love it? Probably because of this meaning. But there are two other aspects. One aspect is because in it Allah Almighty granted the Messenger وسلم, forgiveness for all his sins, whatever in the past, whatever in the, in the future. So this is a great glad tiding and gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Messenger وسلم. In it also there is a glad tiding, there are glad tidings to the believers, the followers of the Messenger وسلم, of forgiveness, pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Almighty is happy with them, Allah Almighty promises them paradise and so on. So many promises for the believers in it. Now listening to the recitation of the Holy Quran, the Messenger وسلم, used to listen to the recitation from others. Listening to the recitation is important because it helps you concentrate on the meaning. Helps you concentrate on the meaning, understand, ponder over their message. And the Messenger وسلم, used to love to listen to it from others. He came to Abdullah bin Mas'ud one of the best reciters at the time of the Messenger وسلم, and said to him, recite for me. He was surprised. Shall I recite for you while it was revealed upon you? We listen to the recitation from you. The Messenger وسلم, said, I love to hear it from others. I love to listen to the Quran from others. He says, so I started reciting. He said, I started reciting from the beginning of Surah An-Nisa. So he started reciting, one page, second page, third page, fourth page, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, probably in the eighth or ninth, they went on the... So he said, I reached, until I reached the verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then what about the time when he brings forward from every nation a witness over them, and we will bring you, O Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we'll bring you as witness over this. That is about the hereafter. What about that? Anybody is thinking about this? So it will not only be you there, there will be witnesses over you. Witnesses, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those who gave you any information, any teaching, whether you are following or that, people around you, people that you dealt with, your own self, your own limbs, and so on. There'll be lots of witnesses against So here, when Abdullah bin Mas'ud reached in the recitation to this part, the Messenger وسلم, said to him, enough. This is enough as a recitation. He said to us, so I raised my head and I saw the eyes of the Messenger وسلم, weeping with tears. Pondering about the meaning, about that situation, that presentation, that time. That is how effective the recitation was when the Messenger وسلم, listened to it. By the way, listening to the recitation of the Holy Quran is one of the sure ways or means of receiving mercy from Allah Almighty. If you are in a difficult situation, you are in a difficult time, you are feeling that you need more mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever is passing by you, listen to the recitation of the Holy Quran. Al-Layth bin Sa'd, one of the scholars, says, very famous scholars, and he was the teacher of Imam Malik and others. He said, I, I, I do not know anyone who is closer to receiving the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from someone who listened to the Holy Quran. Where did he get this meaning from? From the Holy Quran itself. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so when the Holy Quran is recited, then listen to it and pay attention that you may receive mercy. May, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran, perhaps may means for sure. That is not the same like our speech. The scholars of the Holy Quran says, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking, it says, maybe or may, it means for sure it's going to happen. But here, just because it's up to the wish of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes uses this. Clear? 
uh, as if it means so you will receive mercy if Allah Almighty wants to but it means for sure guaranteed clear now the next after that is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to remember Allah Almighty a lot there are many forms of dhikr that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to love out of them four stands out Four words, he says that they are more beloved to me than whatever the sun shines over in this world. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. If you are, have free time, any time, passing by, waiting, driving, do not be silent, do not waste your time. This is an opportunity. You can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart. You can remember him with voice when you are alone, when you are in the presence of somebody. But do not wait. This is an opportunity. Time is an opportunity. You can convert all of that into rewards. So simply, learn to teach as the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Keep, say it, keep your tongue wet with the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Keep moving that tongue with the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Now, uh, the second part, this is the ibadah part. The second part is the dealing, dealing with other people. And here this can be summarized with one word which is simply dealing with them with the best possible etiquette, with good manners and good etiquettes. The Messenger وسلم, said, the most beloved to me out of all of you is those who are best in their morals and etiquettes. To be more beloved to the Messenger وسلم, this is one of the most important means of receiving love from the Messenger وسلم, in the hereafter. Now, uh, speech-wise, the Messenger وسلم, loved the speech that is true, truthful speech. He hated that anyone will tell a lie or something that is incorrect, even while joking. He disliked that a lot. He loved your speech to be always true all the time. Whether you are talking about someone you love or someone you hate, even about the, your enemy, do not lie. Speak something true all the time. That is what the Messenger وسلم, loved. One beautiful aspect about the etiquette and manners is helping people who are in need during their difficult time. We are all human beings. We all pass with difficult times and easy time. When you are at your easy time, help those who are at difficulty. The Messenger وسلم, said, to walk with my brother to fulfill his need is more beloved to me than performing i'tikaf for one full month is in this masjid of mine. The masjid of Medina. One full month of i'tikaf. Complete worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Recitation of the Holy Quran and prayer. Each prayer there is 1,000 prayer. Multiplication. The Messenger وسلم, said, just to, to walk with someone to fulfill his need is more beloved to me. It means more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. That's how practical the religion is. It's not only about your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's about how you deal with other people also and how uh, you help them. Another element is taking things easy. Clemency, tolerance, forbearance. These, the two elements of clemency and, and, and or, or, or if you may, deliberateness and, and forbearance, thinking before you talk, thinking before you act, that these two, the Messenger وسلم, mentioned them as great characteristics that Allah Almighty loves and that His Messenger loves. He said to Ashaj Abd al Qais, one of the Sahaba, عنه, he says, You have possess or you possess two qualities that Allah Almighty loves and His Messengers loves. And these are clemency and tolerance, or forbearance and uh, deliberateness. So he is speaking about this, and we need this probably more than at, at, at our time, more than at any other time in history. We are seeing so many cases of people saying things, taking decisions at a moment of anger, or without enough deliberation and considerations and thinking and forbearance. Doesn't make sense. I'm saying all the time, all the cases referred to me by the court, especially divorce cases, unbelievable. People are just simply playing with their lives. Taking such a dangerous and difficult and important decision at a moment of anger, at a moment of disagreement, at a moment of misunderstandings, at a moment of fighting, quarreling with your wife or your spouse, that is not the time for such a decision. 
When you need to make a decision, Allah Almighty loves that you take it deliberately. Think about it carefully. Think about the consequences upon you, upon your spouses, upon your children, the future and so on. And then weigh the matter and think what is good for you. Same, the same for women as well. Applying for divorce for such trivial things. Does it make sense? That is not how family life works. So these two qualities that the Messenger وسلم, is speaking about, something that we need on a daily thing. They were the most beloved out of our two beloved etiquettes or, or qualities to Allah Almighty and His Messenger. Uh, next after that is forgiveness. Forgiveness and tolerance with dealing with other people means when you have a dispute with them, something that the Messenger وسلم, loves. When the angel came to him, says, Allah Almighty sent me so that if you want to punish your people for their crime, I'm there. Just order me, I will do. The Messenger وسلم, said, the gate of repentance and forgiveness and mercy is more beloved to me. And he prayed for them, for his enemy at that time. So the idea is that like, we see some, sometimes some people, they do not want to forgive anyone for the least mistake. Why is that? He's another human being. We all err and do mistakes. Some bad thing happened, a mistake happened, intentionally or unintentionally. That is room for forgiveness. That is where the test is. Do you want to forgive and be merciful? Or do you want to stand for justice and say, no, I want everything? No blame upon you if you are asking for justice, but that is not a higher quality. The higher quality is to forgive, pardon, and ignore it and move on. Allah Almighty, when He says about Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, and about a person who committed one of the biggest mistake in history, and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu decided to stop helping him simply, not punishing him. So in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to continue helping him and says, don't you love that Allah Almighty forgive you? So help him and forgive him. Don't you love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you? So deal with people as you wish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to deal with you. Is it clear? Let me repeat that again. Deal with others, whether they are friends or fool, close by or far. You are in agreement or disagreement. During peace or war, whatever it might be, deal with people as you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to deal with you. Simple. This is a guideline. Based on the ayah and many other sources. Now, the next after that is in your appearance, in your personal etiquettes and appearance. Many things. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa loved being optimistic. Whatever happens, be optimistic. Do not worry. Do not have anxiety. Do not have sad feelings and so on. All of these are rejected in Islam. All the negative feelings. So he loved positive feelings. Most important out of them is optimism. Uh, the Messenger وسلم, also loved the person to be shy. Not have a, a stern face all the time with everyone. But to shy off sometimes and let things move by. This is part of being uh, easy going in life. Also, he loved uh, privacy. Uh, try to conceal your aura and the part, the, the part that should not be displayed in front of people all the time. Sometimes we find people coming to the masjid in their um, uh, home clothing or sleeping clothing. Yeah? You might have seen something like that. Or showing part of the shoulders or, or, or the legs. That is not what the Messenger وسلم, loves. Yes, you have covered the required aura, but that is not the etiquette of the masjid. You need to pay attention. You are in, in, in meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Probably every one of us will shy from meeting anybody, anybody important to you in such attire. Isn't it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the believers to take their best attires in the masjid. Dress in the best you have. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us. You are coming to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What should you put on? Wallahi, they will tell us that we are to going to meet your boss or a minister or a ruler or something. What will you put on? Inside and outside. All your best attire, isn't it? You are in a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Messenger وسلم, loved this concept of shyness in front of uh, other people and respecting the, 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 the privacy and not showing what should not be shown and so on. Another part that the Messenger وسلم, loved is to have a good smell all the time. Perfumes and good smells. 
he hated bad smells and he would stop eating so many food just because of their bad smell and in one incident no time to elaborate now but in one incident some of the two wives of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted to uh, stop the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam from eating a gift that another wife gave him is that when he ate it it was honey and he loved honey so when he ate it he says i, I am i am uh, smelling a strange smell that i'm not used to so it's probably something that you have eaten probably that honey some uh, honey has different smell different texture different taste and so on depends on the source so and the second wife said the same so the messenger sallallahu realized it must be the honey so he stopped eating that he says i'll never eat from that long story short the concept just because of the smell he will rarely eat onion or garlic just because of the smell and so on he says if you want to eat it you should kill it with cooking it means so much so that there will be no smell and he loved perfumes a lot and loved to put on perfumes and so on and all the sahaba says we have never smelled any smell any perfume that is more sweet and, and, and pleasant than the smell of the messenger وسلم, all the time never nobody ever found any foul smell from the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the, he also the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved to be presentable once when the disbelievers were there was a meeting between the muslims and the disbelievers the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the muslims put on your best attires perfume yourself purify yourself and be presentable be presentable in front of the people so that they will never see anything that is out of sight that is how the Messenger وسلم, loved the good attires and, and, and good dresses uh, and so on. Uh, the final part is about international relations or public relations. And there are again many things, but we will uh, try to summarize it. The first one is cooperation on goodness and justice. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Holy Quran, and cooperate or help one another on goodness and justice. And do not help one another on oppression and wrongdoings, and sin and wrongdoings. And this was the guidance of the Messenger Sallallahu what he loved. And he said that the best part of the religion itself is to be easygoing and, and uh, tolerant uh, of other uh, people and moderate in the religion. He said the most beloved part of the religion to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the most beloved religion to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is al hanifiyya Samha. Hanifiya is the straightforwardness of Ibrahim السلام, and the Messenger وسلم, and those who followed uh, the Messenger وسلم, and as Samha means the moderate and tolerant one. That is the beloved thing to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. The second part is cooperation on uh, installing justice and helping the oppressed. There was an incident during the youth of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nicknamed Hilful Fudul the alliance of the righteous or the alliance of those who are good okay it could also be translated as the alliance of interference the incident is uh, no, no time to elaborate one man a trader came to Mecca one of the elite in Mecca took the uh, merchandise but did not pay him so he went to the people of Quraysh trying for anyone to help him. He's a stranger. The oppressor was an elite in Quraysh. So everybody feared him and feared his tribe. So no tribe by itself could stand against that tribe. So nobody helped him. So he asked, is there anybody who can help him? They pointed. Anyway, the five tribes, the five tribes who were the alliance, they decided to, be, to, to, to form an alliance including the tribe of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his cousins and others so they formed an alliance they called it the alliance of the righteous the idea is to help those who are the strangers and the weak who are oppressed by the elite so they will stand with the weak and the oppressed until justice is established so they formed that they went to the trader and said we are analyzed now we're not talking as one single tribe all of us if you will not give the right back to that poor man either pay him or return the merchandise or uh, we will take it by force so the messenger وسلم, praised that alliance a lot he said i have attended in the house of abdullah Jadan, an alliance that is before islam that is more beloved to me than all the wealth on earth 
And if they call me to a similar alliance after Islam, I will still be part of it. Part with the disbelievers and the polytheists to form an alliance to help establishing justice. Establishing justice, helping the weak and the oppressed. Because this is one of the most important elements that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. That is in the public relations and the world relations uh, as well. Uh, well finally, uh, the idea of this khutbah is to get to understand the Messenger وسلم, and his etiquette and what he loves. And to do our best to abide by that and, and, and follow the sunnah and guidance of the Messenger وسلم. The true love of the Messenger وسلم, is by applying them. And that is the idea. Interestingly, the Messenger وسلم, said one beautiful hadith. When the Sahaba heard it, they said we were never happier with a hadith from the Messenger وسلم, after Islam than with this hadith. Nothing was more beloved to us than this hadith of the Messenger وسلم. That hadith is dealing with what we are talking about. The hadith is simply the Messenger وسلم, said a person in the hereafter is with those that whom he loves. With those whom he loves. Where will you be in the hereafter? With anyone, any group, any people that you love. <coughs> so the narrator says, and I love the Messenger وسلم, and his Sahaba. So I wish that I will inshallah be with them. I'm not doing enough to deserve that, but because of my love, inshallah, I'll be with them. So we say the same. We love the Messenger وسلم, and the Sahaba, and we pray to Allah Almighty Amen. to make us their companions in the hereafter. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.